On this episode, we're joined by Freddie Savundra, who is the CTO of SPF Private Clients and also the founder of Meet Parker, which is a new AI-driven mortgage chatbot. So today we're going to discuss mortgage technology and explore whether artificial intelligence really can transform the UK mortgage market. So firstly, Freddie, thank you for joining us today. Um, for those that aren't familiar with Meet Parker as a product, what does it do? So well, thank you for the invite. Great to be here. Uh, so we are an engagement tool. Mm-hmm. We're the first point of contact for your business, whether it's a property developer, an estate agent, a mortgage broker, a lender. We're the first thing that your customer sees when it comes to engaging with your brand. Okay. And that's how we built the product around. There's a lot there and we'll get to the detail next. But before we do, can you tell us about your personal background? Because you've, uh, you've actually got two roles at the moment, haven't you? A couple of hats, yeah, to yep. my bad hairline. So we've <laughs> got, uh, my first hat is Meet Parker. So yep. developing the product and the company that we are today. Mm-hmm. Second hat is I look after the, the IT, the infrastructure and cybersecurity for SPF private clients, mm-hmm. which is a high net worth brokerage in the city. Yeah, yeah. I think before then, you were in the army, weren't you? Or? I was. I left, uh, well, I, did, I did my time in the reserves. So I started okay. with the signals, moved to the commandos. Mm-hmm. Uh, kind of a thing you do out, getting out of uni, I think. Got to get yes. cold and wet and <laughs> screamed out for a bit. Uh, moved into the city, joined London and Country Mortgages, moved yep. to SPF. And uh, here I am today on a, on a yellow sofa. So <laughs> every day is a What a journey. <laughs> oh, it's brilliant. The yellow sofa is the best bit. So if we look at uh, your experience, that you've been around the sector for sort of five years-ish, is that, is that right? Five, six years, Five, yeah. six years. So when you first kind of uh, got involved in the sector, what most surprised you around the adoption of technology in the mortgage world? I think maybe it's the generational thing, but you, mm. you, when I went in to get my mortgage, I couldn't believe how many questions they would ask and, you know, the paperwork mm. and how disconnected it was from just wanting to get the house with the blue door because that's all I wanted. I wanted the mm. house with the blue door. Uh, so in, you know, in a lot of ways, especially with an IT hat on, you look mm. at, you know, talking with outside systems, you look at how they interact and you can see a lot of the problems that legacy companies have. Mm-hmm. But the reality is, in my head, it's it's still the disconnect between buying that property and getting the mortgage and just having to put the info in mm. at three different points. Yes. Um, and that really hasn't changed much over the last, well, five years. It's, I think we're, we're at the foothills of something genuinely quite exciting mm. now, but it's it's just that time span that's always confused me. Yes. Well, having her been around the sector since 2004 in some form. I say it's longer than five years, hasn't it? Really <laughs> much, but, People keep telling me this, but I wasn't around, yeah. <laughs> but I do think, you know, especially given the events of the last 18 months, you know, the pace of change is really sort of accelerating and it's exciting to see products such as yourselves as well entering the market. So you talked in sort of general terms about what the product does. Can you give us a bit more, paint the picture a bit more depth around what the product does and how you developed it? Yeah, of course. So let's say Joe Bloggs. Joe Bloggs loves that house with the blue door. Mm-hmm. If he's come through Facebook, WhatsApp, Insta, TikTok, you know, it really doesn't matter. Mm. At the end of the day, we want to connect what we call a seeker with mm-hmm. an expert. Mm-hmm. So that could be Joe Bloggs trying to get hold of the estate agent and book a viewing. Mm-hmm. It could be Joe Bloggs now needs a mortgage, so we're going to connect him off with a mortgage broker. It could be that mortgage broker now needs to ask some criteria questions, so we'll connect him with the lender. Okay. It, it's all about connecting the seeker wherever they are, whether it's social, web, wherever they are on the journey through to the expert and sort of using clever bits of pieces and technology in, in the middle. Okay. So is that kind of, you're not proactively seeking to connect, it would be triggered by the person, you know, if I'm looking for a mortgage and then how would I engage using your platform with a broker? Yeah. So, I mean, typically what we find is a lot of brokers are quite savvy when it comes to digital marketing, mm-hmm. some not so savvy, but mm-hmm. most of them have got, you know, a decent strategy in place. Yeah. We're all about that uh, small percentage increase. So whether okay. it's, you know, 14% of people filling in a form and connecting with one of their advisors. Mm. We're all about how do we get it to 80 and how do we get it to 20? How do we connect that seeker with that expert mm. in a really streamlined way, okay. uh, predominantly through social media? Got you. And we were talking just before around, you know, it's an AI-driven chatbot. AI can mean, you know, for some people, artificial so intelligence yeah. or, yeah. you know, he said augmented intelligence. So what's going on under the, you know, with the platform in terms of the technology that's built upon? So we always talk about becoming almost like middleware. I okay. think any company that's saying that they're doing artificial intelligence, blockchain, it, you know, these are big words that have to stack up. We, mm. we always try and portray the truth, which is we are augmented intelligence. Mm. We're using natural language, machine learning, mm-hmm. and, you know, all the, um, the mechanisms that allow you to get a natural conversation in place, mm. but leveraging the technology that already exists. Mm. So mm. whether that's Cortana, Siri, IBM Watson, it, you know, the tech stack that we work with really is agnostic. We just mm. want to find the best one that okay. fits for that particular client. 
yeah. and then mould our product around what works for their architecture. Interesting, interesting. I've got lots of questions there. So I guess, first of all, from the, from a, the customer perspective, so the product you developed, what, over the last year or two? Two years, 24 two years, months. Yeah, and I'd imagine there's been an element of user testing and sort of with, with customers as part of that. Absolutely, yeah. And yeah. So what's the feedback been like from users? Is this something that they're kind of itching for or, or is it more you're trying to solve the sort of broker problem? And you know? Good question. I think initially we, we thought we had one problem that we were going to solve, which okay. is, you know, everyone goes to Facebook and suddenly all, you know, they're, they're going to hit an advert and then engage with Parker through Facebook. But the reality mm-hmm. is a lot of people don't necessarily like Facebook. Mm-hmm. So we thought from the very beginning, we need to think wider than Facebook. We need to think mm-hmm. what channel do they want? And then it was the sort of the light bulb moment. Well, everyone has their own channel. I use WhatsApp more than anything, but I talked to my brother through WeChat. Mm. And WeChat's got 1.4 billion people. But if you right. go to the Far East, you can scan on the Metro, you can buy a packet of crisps with WeChat. Yeah. So that kind of got us thinking about what else can we do? Can we build into other channels? And that's where the product's kind of taken us. Okay. Interesting. So in terms of, let's practically then, mm-hmm. so I'm a, so you have, your customers are brokers and lenders and property companies? We predominantly deal with mortgage brokers, yep. property firms, and we are obviously in discussion with a few lenders at the moment. Yes. So how does you, how do you connect that to their sort of tech stack? So if, if I'm a broker and I want to use your, your platform, mm-hmm. what's the sort of, you know, the steps of plugging in, for example, to, you know, the, the broker CRM or, sourcing platforms or lender APIs, because traditionally the sector has been a bit slow in having those APIs available. Things are moving. Is, is, do you sort of do those connections for every installation or how does it work? Absolutely. So we've got a very good team of developers and we've, mm. we've built the product quite luckily. Obviously with the cybersecurity hat on, the yeah. way you build a product now is very different to where you built it 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. And we built it so that we can talk to the outside world with CRMs, sourcing platforms, okay. integration tools, third party tools but also receive updates back. So we have a two-way communication, uh, which is straight out of the box for us. Wow, okay, because that's been a real challenge in, in the sector. Is if you just come at the right time, then these APIs are available. Is that, that, that? It, it, it really depends because mm. a lot of businesses have got you know, traditional CRMs or mm. systems which are strictly for internal businessing, yeah. business use. Mm. And the reality is they were never meant for external communication. Mm. They were meant for you know communicating as a business and one way out. But yeah. to get information to go back in, you're talking, you know, without going too tacky, denial of service, attacks, you know, any, yeah. everything in between. Mm. Um, and we try to, you know, work with these platforms so that we can, mm-hmm. you know, talk to them and receive the updates back. Yeah. But ultimately, we're engagement, we're communication. Yes, yes. So actually, diving back to that question around the users then. So, and we do, we build chatbots and conversation uh, uh, platforms, and we've tested them with all sorts of different types of users. And we have seen, you know, generationally different kind of appetites to use these types of platforms. Is your product aimed at a particular audience or, or what sort of feedback have you had uh, from those end users? So for the more digital prominent brokers or mm. the more digital prominent firms, we're all about that incremental increase of connecting people. Yeah. But where we're really starting to see the interest and the solution pan out is multi-language. So enabling okay. Joe Blogs to communicate in French, Spanish, Russian, whatever it may be to Parker, Parker Mm. to then translate it. But then working with firms that have got a really large data set, because that's where the magic really happens. Mm. Uh, And that's traditionally more the lender space. It's actually communicating with criteria. Uh, Okay. And why our partnership and the investment from from 27 Tech is is massive for us here, because we now have a product which can Mm. feed off, you know, 50,000 sets of data, Mm. communicate with the client in the channel that they want to, Mm. but also, you know, provide a solution for lenders, whether it's, you know, what's the best rate on the market or, you know, how can you lend on self-employed individuals mm. for two years? Yes. Through 27 Tech, we now have that data and we can communicate okay. through to them. Yeah, I mean, we've, we've uh, built criteria chatbots for some lenders and uh, and that was primarily B2B, so broker mm. focus. The idea was to augment the, the call centre and really help, well, make better experience for the brokers to not have to call in to get a, 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 an answer to a question, but also the call centre can focus on more sort of meaningful conversations. So when went there. From... From a customer's perspective then, because sometimes those criteria, you know, if you plug in with uh, 27 Tech or, or Criteria Hub or Knowledge Bank, you know, there's a lot of data there, but sometimes that intent and that nuance around the answer, the, the, there's going to need to be some broker involvement at some point to sort of really explain that to the user. Does your platform know when, do, does it have the sort of ability to hand off to and know when to involve a human agent in that conversation and how does that work in practice? Yeah, so I mean, that, that's actually the predominant thing on what we try to focus on because okay. I think... 
I'm on that. I, I really dislike chatbots. Mm. I think they are clunky, slow. We always say we're not a chatbot company, mm. but the reality is chatbots do something very well, which is mm. gather information and present a solution. Yeah. Where we've come with Parker is all about using sentiment analysis, i.e. how is that customer feeling, Yeah. Uh, and confidence scoring. So yes. am I confident that's the right answer? And mm. I'll give you an example. Mm. So if you go to, let's say, lender A and say, lender A, will you lend on this particular property within... You know, it's in central London, it's above a chip shop. Mm. That might be, you know, outside of criteria because it's above a chip shop, but it might be central Mayfair. It might be the you know, most expensive packet of chips yeah. you've had in your life. In which case, that's where Parker says, I know that's the answer officially on paper. I also know this is a million quid penthouse mm. above a chip shop. Okay. Let me just connect you to the right person. And we use confidence scoring and metrics around there mm. to then provide that seamless engagement with the right person yes. at the right point in the business. Yes. That's interesting. So it sounds like the technology stack that you're using has elements of natural language processing. It does have a chatbot element, a part of it. Uh, uh, um, so you could broadly say, well, some people would pitch that as artificial intelligence. But I noticed when we were speaking earlier, you were quite reluctant, which is kind of opposite to a lot of startups, dare I say, in the market in the last five years or so that have really pitched themselves as, you know, AI driven, AI is an artificial intelligence driven mortgage bots or solutions. Whereas you seem like you're, and actually the challenge has been is when you scratch beneath the surface of these players, uh, often it'd be a little bit of smoke and mirrors. There wouldn't really be any much intelligence put on there. But, you know, maybe you're actually underselling the intelligence of the platform slightly. Or <laughs> it's, I think any, I'm, I'm very reluctant when you ever read about a new company and they're saying mm. we're using blockchain, artificial intelligence, yes. quantum computing. It's the sort of three buzzwords you think, okay, that's going to raise a lot of interest, but there's yep. a lot of smoke and mirrors there. Is, mm. you know, is it their own tech stack? Is it their own IP? Are they just leveraging what somebody else has yep. done? We're very open about the way we work. Mm. We use best of breed technology okay. to complement that journey and just design the solution so that we use sentiment analysis, tone analysis, machine mm. learning, and natural language to provide the right answer at the right point mm. and escalate the conversation when the confidence mm. is a little bit below what Parker thinks it is. Yes. Cool. Well, we'd love to hear a bit more about the origin story, the hand came to found the company. Also, perhaps you just mentioned 27 Tech, we can touch upon uh, that investment. So, yeah, how did, he, how did he come up with the idea and what's the sort of origin oh, story? Oh, in the moment. You're in the bathtub and you think, I'm going to create a company called Meet Parker. I wish. <laughs> no, it was... Um, well, I love the fact you got the branded... I know, uh, it came just in today. time. I thought, <laughs> I've got to wear this today, but um, a little bit tight. <laughs> so, I mean, the company itself, I, I've built a solution before, which was a help to buy okay. AI, AI, augmented intelligence advisor called Ava. Mm -hmm. And the idea behind Ava was it was all about connecting the seeker with an expert through web. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, very quickly we found, where's our main source of traffic coming from? And it was, well, actually, it's coming from social. It's coming from Facebook. It's coming from ads. Yeah. And the idea was, well, what, wouldn't it be cool? It's always that moment, wouldn't it be cool if we could take that journey and put it into social media mm -hmm. and, not, and kind of avoid the web journey sort of point and just okay. see if there is a client that wanted to go through social whether it's an, you know, an application update or whether it's, you know, what's the best rate on the market or, you know, will, will you lend above the chip shop? Whatever the scenario is, mm. wouldn't it be cool if you could do it through that app and that app and that app? Mm. And it won't be for everyone's appetite, but there's a small demographic that that will just hit really well. Okay. And that's basically where the product, the idea came from, okay. was developed from there. So you had the idea. A few steps to actually having uh, uh, the kind of built product in the company and ultimately that, that kind of... Uh, uh, partnering up with 27 Tech. So, yeah, did you raise funding or how, tell us a bit more about that, that process? So, yeah, I mean, I, I pushed the company, well, I incorporated in December last year. Okay. Thinking this might be something, this might be nothing, well, let's see what happens. Yeah. Uh, January 3rd, I think, I put an advert out on LinkedIn and said, yeah. we come to market, this is what we do. And in about three minutes, I got a call from Phil Bailey saying, can we talk? I thought, oh, no, what have I done? Have I just crashed 27 <laughs> Tech's roadmap? Um as you always, probably the worst nightmare for any company. So the third day into the year, you think, oh, somebody else is doing this. Mm. Um, but it was completely the opposite. He wanted to know more what we were doing. Uh, and from there, the kind of conversation just started. Okay. Uh, yeah. Interesting, because I think we, we had James Tucker in for uh, uh, the first in-person recording of our, uh, our podcast. And that's when I first met you after in the pub. Uh, so it was around that time that, that those conversations were kind of... Uh, it was when you were at the loo. It okay. actually, as, soon as, as soon as you jumped <laughs> off, me and, me and James were under the table, I think. Mean, okay. Scratching. But no, um, yeah, so James and I started speaking, I think it was early early February. Mm -hmm. I think once Phil had done the due diligence about what we were doing and yeah. what we were trying to bring to market. Um, and immediately the synergies were there. It was, mm. look, this is 27 Tech. This is what we're trying to achieve. This is the pain points that we think. Mm. And, you know, synergy is an overused word, but the reality yes. is what they want to do is 
improve the journey for brokers, clients, lenders at every point. Mm -hmm. And that tied in with our ethos perfectly because mm -hmm. we always use the hashtag, not another tech company. Yeah. But it's, you know, it's very easy to go to market and say, we're going to release this and, mm -hmm. you know, you've got to log in here and here, but you can't use that product. We're all about mm -hmm. incremental performance enhancements mm -hmm. and working with 27 tech was just natural synergy mm. for us yes and instantly gives a lot of credibility to the product as well i guess i mean we've got a lot to lot to work on and mm. we're very open about what we're doing mm. and you know we're very new to market but equally to have 27 tech's very support was you know massive yeah. for us yes so i saw phil had joined us and he's the managing, managing director, director yeah so how does that change your role and, and it's terrible he signs off my holiday he's got to sign <laughs> off my expense um, Phil, Phil was come in to really run the company. Okay. And there's probably about three people in the industry, you're obviously one mark, where you, you think, could they do a better job than me? And the reality is I've known Phil for five years. Mm. He's done an exceptional job with 27 with James and the team. And when the kind of conversation first came up, it was, this is, of course, why would you say no to Phil? Mm. He, you know, he, he understands the product. He understands the soft points, uh, the touch points that we can improve on. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we, again, we're not another tech product. We're all about, you know, mm. delivering on what we're trying to do. And, and it would be almost hypocritical of me to say no to Phil if, you know, I was confident he could do a better job. But it, I mean, it was a tough choice because you don't often see many founders, CEOs sort of step, not step down, but sort of pass the reins over to somebody else to really drive it mm. forward. So quickly, yeah. Um, my goal is product development. We want to mm. build the best product we can. And I thought yeah. with Phil on the team running the company as MD, mm. it's the best choice we can mm. make. And it's interesting. There's been a lot of new entrants into the market in recent years. Sometimes, you know, coming in from outside of uh, the mortgage world, you know, dare I say sometimes with some naive ambitions or, or you know, just don't have that experience of, uh, of the mortgage world. So I think it's interesting here that you're both from within that, you know, that, that space. And uh, I think that's interesting to see how it develops. Uh, early days still but I think yeah. we've got a good team and a good roadmap mm. and we're hoping to do some really cool stuff in the next few months sounds good well on that then because we're going to wrap up in a moment but uh, 2022 just around the corner what's on the horizon uh, uh, for you uh, and Meet Parker so languages is a big thing we just we announced mm. that a couple of days ago so okay. the ability for Parker to communicate in any language that's you know machine learning possible mm. and then connect with the expert crack out as many social channels as we can so you okay. know whether it's wechat tiktok alexa google home wherever it's coming from we want to we want to plug in okay uh and then the third part is our lender solution so it's all about enhancing the journey for brokers to communicate with lenders and to get okay. through to the right person and okay. do that in an efficient way interesting so if we come back this time next year we'll see how the products develop oh but i'll have a different jumper on i'm sure <laughs> but probably the same pair of shoes but yeah sounds good and if people want to find out more about me parker what's the best place meetparker.co.uk cool good well thank you very much for coming in today uh, we appreciate your time and uh, thanks to our audience for, for listening <laughs>